This is a show where we do things and talk about stuff. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm joined, uh, as per usual, by my uh, pals. Uh, class of 2000s voted most likely to wear black, Alice and Tar. Uh, Are you really class of 2000? No. Oh. Shit. I could be. <laughs> I was smarter than I was. <laughs> and... Uh, Chumba Wumba expert uh, <laughs> Gary Kovar, uh, who's I have been known to, th known to thump a tub or two. <laughs> uh, this is the show where it's basically like Balderdash. We don't have, uh, we don't know what the topic is before going into it. Uh, one of us, generally Allison, brings the topic and we discuss it as if we did know what it was. Uh, and uh, hijinks ensue. Uh, as always, you can subject, suggest topics, you can ask us questions, uh, you can just tell <clears throat> us how, why you bother listening to this show, if that's the thing that you do, <laughs> through our form on our website. Uh, www.binaryjazz.us, uh, or you can contact us on Twitter at Binary Jazz. Um, I take it that you were doing intros today, no? That's that's how it rolls. <laughs> I think that's what just happened. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. It's fine. Do you have something planned, Gary? Do you want? Do you feel left out? Would you like to do your intro? No, I just thought it was my week, and I I didn't have anything planned. But I, uh, you know, here we are. If I don't have intros planned, I, we don't have to get into the topic. So <laughs> that's true. Uh, this week, I believe we're switching things around. And uh, Allison is, n is not going to come to us with a topic. Instead, Gary is going to come to us with a topic, which I will uh, predict in advance is something spacey. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Pioneer movement is the topic. Pioneer movement. <coughs> That's the distance traveled from <laughs> the center of a zero to the outside, to the round part of a zero. It's called the Pioneer Movement. <laughs> uh, I was going to say that the, the Pioneer Movement <clears throat> is a movement of, uh, of people uh, organizing <coughs> to uh, pioneer uh, uh, habitation on Mars. So, so it's a movement of, of like a, a you know a consortium of you know business leaders and citizens and uh, whatnot uh, to to find a tangible and feasible way of of um, populating the red planet. So uh, hinting is not a thing we do. No, so I will not confirm not. or deny that this has anything to do with space. <laughs> but but it's like manifest destiny for space. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pi the pioneer movement. Yeah, we, like we, Oregon uh, Trail. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, uh, alternately, uh, so I live in Utah. Yes. Uh, I don't know if other states do this. I don't think other states do this, but we're really a big fan of of the pioneers that settled here. I've you know, always said you live in the best, huh? <laughs> we, we, because it's you, Ta. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We uh, we have a Pioneer Day, which is a state holiday where we blow fireworks. Uh, we're really big fans of, of Pioneers. Wait, with the Pioneers big in the fireworks? Uh, no. Okay. But we celebrate them by, by blowing up fireworks, I guess. I, I was just hoping I was about to learn something crazy. Like, yeah, yeah they knew how to pack gunpowder. Old tiny fireworks. There's nothing yeah. better. Uh, so, so many of those old black and white pictures, people have like missing limbs. So because Utah is so big into pioneers, I, I feel like I know a little something about pioneers and the pioneer yeah. movement. Yeah. Uh, so uh, pioneer movement is, uh, is just when you have a caravan 
of pioneers going from one place to another mm. and it's it's traveling across a particular uh route uh and as it's moving it's referred to as pioneer movement i mean i guess technically pioneers are moving follow that definition however <laughs> it is not correct <laughs> It's like a big wagon train. Yeah. Only space. You like, you like how I brought in all, the, all this outside knowledge and then I just did something really, really obvious. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> literally to find the two words and just put them together. <laughs> to be fair, it would have been like where I went with it too. So. <laughs> I feel like Pioneer Movement is just very slow and like crotchety because <laughs> they've had to sleep on the ground. Wow. What would it have been like, like in a wagon train? Like you're the fourth wagon back and you're like, oh good, we're gonna bounce down like this on this rickety old wooden thing for another day. Super exciting. Well, I'm not a pioneer, but I have played Oregon Trail. Right. <laughs> so, like it was very tedious. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. It's not, yeah. Punctuated by- supplies game. Punctuated by dysentery and river crossings. Punctuated by a sudden uh, bout of extreme terror yeah. as you're being attacked by Native Americans or like a bear or something. Oh, yeah, and you could go hunting. I forgot about that. No. Oh, can you? Uh, yeah. Well, I would, seriously. Like you set off with all the bullets, right? Because that's what you did as a kid. You got all the bullets. And, uh, and then you run out. Like, what do you do? Well, I made it to Arkansas. Now I'm going <laughs> to die. <laughs> That's because people still say that. I feel like people probably still say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you didn't get enough bullets. Yeah. And you didn't get any food besides what you thought you would hunt yeah. on the way. Yeah. Yeah. That was a really bad strategy because yeah. I feel my like I feel like my wagon just always broke down and I didn't have enough like spare axles to like fix the wheels and that was always because it was maybe like too maybe I bought too much. Too Obviously, much neither of you were playing by the unspoken rule that you always you always leave as the doctor. <laughs> you ha that way you have money and yeah. when someone gets sick, you can get them. You can help them not be sick anymore. What were some other options? You could be the doctor, you could be... Banker. Mm -hmm. uh, and then like farmer, which was shit. <laughs> the value the was, 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 never... was that the deal? What? What was the value in the banker? You could buy things at a discount? Yeah, you, know, you just had shit tons of money. I think, yeah. yeah, you had more money to start off with. And, um, and carpenter, uh, which was also, I mean, moderately helpful because you could repair your, your wagon when it broke, but um, you didn't, you didn't have, I mean, the doctor was the shit. The doctor was the thing that you did because so, you had the money, not as much money as the banker, but you had the money and you could, you could heal people when they're sick. If you could send any career back in time to uh, the Oregon Trail, what career would you add to it? Software developer. I was thinking okay. astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. We're all on the same page there. <laughs> Optometrist. <laughs> no, oh, that's a good one. That 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 would be far too useful. I I would I would I'd much rather see a software developer on the Oregon Trail be like, I I don't know how to work with these criteria. Where's my JavaScript framework. <laughs> <laughs> this this framework does not does not work with me. Next time. What's that? Let's abstract it so we can reuse it when we have to cross the next river. Yeah. Oh no! In the time I abstracted it, I got eaten by a bear. I got, I got eaten by a bear. <laughs> need to need to abstract the wagon so we can float it across the river. Or at least hub, yeah. Or like the method of let's let's use the factory pattern. We can build a wagon factory and then we're gonna <laughs> never run out of wagons. Oh, this is a good idea. Let's stash this. What do you mean I can't get stash in real life? <laughs> <laughs> Um, are you all um, worried about get checkout going away and get switch get reset? Or re I do not know what this is you speak of. So get checkout. Well, it'll still work for a while. It's not deprecated yet. But get the next. What do you mean? Like, you check? Uh oh, you froze Ooh. for a second. Am I back? I think you're back. Yeah, yeah, you're back. So when you check out a branch. 
Yeah, so the idea is that checkout has two meanings right now. You check out a branch, but then you can also like check out a file from another branch specifically, which is not actually checking it out. It's resetting it to the, you know. So they're adding two commands to distinguish between them. So get switch would be the get checkout branch. And get, what's the other one, Chris? You're up on this. No, I'm not. Okay. Get, I don't I think know. this will affect my life in the slightest. <laughs> okay. Well, that's cool. Hey. Yeah. Good. <laughs> it won't affect me uh, nearly as much as it will affect all the people who have written bash commands to shortcut git checkout. Pick me. That's why I'm like, because I use GCO for everything. Not for everything. But, but for enough. Yeah. I don't. Yep. So GCO. I, I feel I feel like modernized because I've been using uh, Visual Studio uh, uh -huh. for the last like month and haven't hated it. So now I feel like you know I'm up with the times because I was using Sublime for yeah. this whole time, basically since freelancing. And um, and yeah. You had X Debug working with Sublime. No, I never had X Debug working with Sublime. Oh. I never cared. I I would I I have a project I'm working on right now, that's like a tiny side thing, and I I don't have X debug set up on it, so I didn't get around to it. And like every time I work on it, I'm like, oh, I should just oh well, I guess I'll just print R and die instead. <laughs> that's that's how I yellow. Yeah, and it's it's okay. I actually don't know that it would. I mean, yeah, yeah. it would be faster with X debug, but. I don't know. Maybe I'll set it up. Probably not. I'm doing so little on it. It's like the yeah, filter gravity form thing. Sure. I think that's, that. the, that's the thing when everybody was like, like complaining about X debug integration or whatever. And I'm like, what does that even, how does that even make your life like easier or faster? Well, so stepping through is awesome. If you don't know where things aren't working. Well, right. If, if X debug is set good. up on the server uh, or the local environment, whatever, like I, I'm, I'm a hundred percent like, you let's you, let's have X debug working on the environment. But like, when you do a var dump and xdebug is set up, then it gives you the, the stack the stack trace anyway. Whereas like, you know, and that's that's how like that's what I use, like if I need to. The difference is that um, there are times where you're not sure like where in the step yeah. of this process is the data incorrect. So you, so being able to step through it and figure out like, oh, well here's a great example. Like um is it what's that complaint about the other day? WP post delete. This is throwing content by the way. WP <laughs> post delete doesn't take a post object at like most WordPress post right. methods functions, it takes only the ID. Most you can pass the post object or the ID and it figures it out, not post delete. So after I didn't delete 60,000 posts because they didn't exist, or they did, they were, there was no like post zero. I don't know what happened. They didn't, it didn't work. Then I had to go back into it again with the right way. Xdebug wouldn't have saved me there. Like actually it, it reading the help. definition of the function would have helped. It does help doing it, doing it the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Should do more of that. <laughs> well, that takes all the fun out of it. Doing things correctly helps. Uh, so that took a turn. Um, I'm still on Sublime. I just can't give it up. It's all so tidy. I have all my shortcuts. Everything's so nice. That's the important thing, right? Like you have the things that you're used to. I keep thinking like maybe the next project I'll give VS Code more of a, because it seems lovely. It's not that it's bad it's just that i'm just what i'm used to and i don't feel like slowing down my workflow at this point but things things that i like or things i appreciate about vs code uh is pretty little icons or mm. different file types uh you can do that in sublime i did find a, a theme that 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 in sublime it actually that was actually one of the things me over to vs code because the thing that did it in sublime was like it's just like vs code and i'm like wait <laughs> Hey. Um, and, um, and wait, what are you talking about? Icons? Yeah, yeah. So like the different file types, different file types have different icons that are that are specific to the file. So like, like compose, like oh. JSON, JSON files are brackets, and PHP files are like little elephants, and uh, the Git okay. file is like a little Git like logo thing, and SAS files are like the fancy little <laughs> S thing. It's a Git logo covering its eyes, like it's ignoring it. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> Um, the, the monkey, the monkey emoji. Oh, wow. Uh, 
And I think I'm gonna change all the icons on my computer to be monkey emojis. And uh, and then there's a there was a uh, a VS Code plugin that I used that was extremely helpful that copied your um, Sublime uh, keyboard shortcuts for everything into VS Code. So like you didn't have to change what you're doing with your fingers because um, it would just map all that stuff to, to the VS Code equivalents. So the big things that I still haven't figured out uh, on VS Code um, that still puzzle me is like in Sublime, if I hold down shift and I go up arrow, down arrow, it will select multiple lines. If I do that in VS Code, it says what? <laughs> it's weird because I swear it works for, I don't know. Yeah. I need to, I need to investigate more because I, the, I mentor some code classes and they use Firefox and VS Code in combination as their defaults. And so like, I don't know what is inherently VS code and what are like things that we've installed during right. class basically. Yeah. <laughs> so I need to go back and double check my list. I'm like, it's, I probably have something mapped or I don't know. I tried looking for the setting several times. I, I'm sure it's there. Yeah. But I have not figured it out yet still. Um, and you don't realize how much you're doing stuff like that. Like, oh, highlighting multiple lines. How often do I really do that? And you're like, all the oh, time. I know. <laughs> <laughs> every time, every time I, I command shift left arrow to like the previous <laughs> line, I realize just how much I use uh, that, that particular keyboard. Company. And maybe that's what pioneer movement is. When you go to do that thing and then it just totally. And totally fails. Oh, that's a cool yeah. theory. <laughs> You're pioneering a new, yeah, uh, a new uh, skill. You're pioneering right. a new skill, and you're trying to do a thing that you did with a previous set of uh, instructions, and it doesn't work. It's kind of yeah. like like a, a, the next step beyond muscle memory. It's like the follow through. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you have retrained yourself, it's called pioneer memory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I wouldn't survive as a pioneer, though, to sum up. Well, I mean, yeah, like, it's... I mean, maybe if I was, like, the baker or something in, like, a village. I don't know. I'm, like, my skill set for, like, pioneer skills is very... I don't know. I can chop wood. The visual thing is a problem. Like, there weren't eyeglasses, really, right? Pretty sure most of my medications aren't available. <laughs> yeah, you would you would just be basically considered crazy. Yeah, just be, oh, I'd be the crazy old witch that lives in the, in the corner of the village. Yeah. <laughs> she floats. I know. I'm like this is fine. <laughs> Let me corrupt everybody. All all those all those natural remedies that you're smoking in the back of your <laughs> yeah. I'm like, do you have a thyroid problem too? Come on down. I've got an herb for that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't. I would not do well as a pioneer either, for a variety of reasons. But mostly, mostly skill involved. <laughs> skill based. I feel like I could make it happen. You seem tenacious enough. But see, again, it's it goes. If something happened, my glasses. I just basically. Yeah, be... I would get out of the tent one morning and go out to take a leak and pee on a bear, and that would be the end of me. <laughs> it's big and brown and blurry. <laughs> <laughs> See, like, and I don't even think if I was like transported back, I don't even think my anxieties would know what to be anxious about. Like, I, I don't think I'd be able to transfer my stress. Oh, that's a good point. Like, you'd, you'd hop back there and you wouldn't even know, like, what are things that can kill me that I should be wary of that I'm just not even like, what, what do I need to know about? So I just wouldn't again. And like, it would just basically be like, oh, that the crazy old witch lady doesn't leave her tent because she's too scared. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be like, you know, you're you're afraid of uh, being attacked by a wild animal when in fact the thing that's going to kill you is like some, like something bad that got into the food or something. Yeah. Like, or like the water supply. I'm like, oh, there's no one yeah. at this well. I'm thirsty. I get all the water. Or I did like cook a thing enough before I ate it and like... Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm not like, sure. This is fine. With someone that you weren't supposed to make eye contact with and then that be it. They... <laughs> no eye contact. Yeah. Cra crazy eye, Bill. Well, which eye do you look at? 
in two different directions. That's why they call him Crazy Eye Bill. <laughs> Just not sure which one's the crazy eye. Works out in his favor. <laughs> um, I don't know the timer. Do we want to know what Pioneer Movement is, or do we? Um, uh, oh, uh, final thoughts. Uh, sure. Let's let's find out. What... I mean, we don't have like a real schedule or plan. Yeah. No, I know that. I I guess I was just looking for consensus. <laughs> Pioneer Movement is an organization for children operated by the by a communist party. So in communist countries, it is the equivalent of scouting. Pioneer Movement. So they're just like little pioneers. Yeah. Yep. So. And here I was stuck in Girl Scouts. I could have been a communist pioneer. <laughs> well, it has to be. It's a um, the party actually like runs it, so it's state sponsored scouting, right? Um, and there are a lot of benefits. It's often maligned as being a form of indoctrination uh, by non communist countries. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of fascinating. It's the communist version of scouts, individual to each country that's communist. Do you know if they have different levels like scouts do? Like, do you work towards like an Eagle Scout sort of situation or? Um, yes, but I'm pretty certain it wouldn't be an Eagle. <laughs> no, no. Well, <laughs> that was my follow-up question. Was yeah. Like, what are it, the levels me? <laughs> it, I don't know. And it varies because it's, it's, it's okay. country specific, just like scouting is pretty country specific. Um, okay. But it, but it, it, it pretty much mirrored scouting or it has used a lot of the models in scouting as we know it. Uh, to kick off. So I was country, always bummed out by scouting because I saw my older brother go through it and he got to do all this cool stuff. And then when I joined Girl Scouts, I didn't get to do any of the same stuff. So I dropped out after a few years. <laughs> it so took me halfway through this conversation to realize that by scouts, you are not talking about like talent scouts. You're talking about <laughs> boys and girl scouts, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Going going out into the into the wilderness and doing naturey things. So listen to some of these countries that have pioneer movements. Um, Belgium, uh, China, obviously, Cuba, Finland, uh, the Czech Republic, Laos, Mexico, North Korea, Portugal, Russia, Ukraine, Spain. So there's some surprises in there. But not all of those are communist countries. Right. 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 The Communist Party has, uh, is I leading see. in those non-communist countries, right? So... Interesting. I would assume too that it's it's probably like a way if you are a, a a member of the party, it's a way to get your children like, you know, yeah, early on, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I mean, uh, boys and Girl Scouts have it's not like they are absent of accusations of indoctrination either. Yeah. Oh, totally, yeah. totally. The best part is in from, indoctrination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nineteen. Well, yeah, yes, yes. I mean, I mean what are parents if not indoctrinating the children? Uh, it, is it though? Because I mean, like scouting, like we when the kids go, like we start with like the Pledge of Allegiance and then the Scout Oath and the Scout Law, like every time. So, I mean, from a very like high level, it's not significantly different. Like the the approach anyway. Um, nineteen twenty two to nineteen thirty four, there was a Young Pioneers League of America. Affiliated with the Communist Party of the USA. I found that kind of in interesting too. Huh. Yeah. So, see so what we missed out on being more than we were. Well, that has nothing to do with space. Nothing at all. I know. That's, that's kind of so bad. confusing. <laughs> so, on, uh, uh, that's so like against, uh, against type. Right, three for a loop there. It's, it's, gotcha. It's against, against the protocol that we don't claim to have. <laughs> um, which is interesting because I, I actually had another topic that was space related, but I feel like you would know what it is, so. But would we know, would we know what it is about? because we know or because you have told us already? <laughs> yeah. That's a good, that's why I think you might know I might have talked about it already. <laughs> I mean, not that Chris and I aren't knowledgeable, but like, I feel like space isn't. Yeah, that's really that's sort of your territory. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, not space our, is our, our final frontier. Our <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was the other topic, the space-related uh, topic? 
the core rope memory core rope memory yeah did we talk about this no ah darn so good so good so like they like when you make a knot and then you can't undo the rope because you're like that's stuck that's the memory of the knot. <laughs> it was actually memory like 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 storage on the apollo missions they actually wove like in ones and zeros they wove this copper wire through these like plates and they would alternate the current to give it a one or a zero on the plate and the pattern of the winding at the end of the board was like how you would put the data out so they they basically like wove the operating system wow yeah it's yeah see that's the sort of thing where i'm just like i get to the point for innovation where i'm like how did it occur to someone to even start that process not even i know i well i think the, the it occurred they ran like a wire through like a magnet they were like oh cool if i spin it this way like i get a one if this way i get a zero like it's on or off right yeah high voltage low voltage and they were like i wonder if i could do that like at a scale where i could store data because at that point bits and stuff were sort of unknown so anyway yeah working working with uh technology and information at that level I still don't understand. I, I, took, I took assembly language, uh, and I've probably said this many times, I've taken assembly language. I still don't understand like, why I did that and what it would have been used for. Like, oh, see, that's interesting. Know, yeah. Like, like I, I was in there, I was writing it, I kind of understand, but like, I still don't understand like, how it works or like, how it gets, yeah. Like going down to that scale of like actually like like alternating voltage currents is just that that becomes too micro for my brain to comprehend. Isn't that fascinating? Like I, I like think about like what's happening in PHP, right? So PHP step one is going down to C, right? And then from C we're dropping down to like assembly, right? Is that what C files do? I guess, I don't know. And then from assembly then like the processors are in, is interpreting that language and saying, well, Let's do something with this transistor over here, and maybe this one over here, and then out the other side, like, well, now we got to put all that crap back together, and like back up the chain, like it's, it's pretty wild, like how far like the early, computery folks went to make it accessible for the rest of us to actually, like write stuff that does things. Most of these thought processes end up with me, alighting on the fact that I'm just like humans are weird. Why do we do these things? <laughs> <laughs> It really does seem like not very logical that this is how we ended up with like computing. That we've abstracted, 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 and then what do you we use it to like send photos of cats? Like <laughs> seems like there's like a higher responsibility somewhere in there with all this. Sending photos of cats? <laughs> <laughs> I mean maybe not. It is a uh, it's a valid thing. Have you seen some people's cats? <laughs> <laughs> they need to be shared with the what, world. <laughs> what was that? Um, uh, what's that? Yeah, Instagram um, thing you shared with the dog space the other day. Oh, um, bubble space. <laughs> oh, that was so good. Yeah, you. Could, yeah, I was amazed. Like when I started scrolling, how far I scrolled and how long I scrolled before before I went. I gotta do some work. <laughs> I think it's. I was telling my friends. I was like, I think it speaks to like the. I don't know. There's something about the repetition of it that is like calming, as well as the fact that it's just like a dog's face and the nose, and you just kind of want to go boop. <laughs> oh, I just want to like. Oh, I want to hug that dog. I want to hug that dog so much. I I will say I did not scroll for probably as long as you did, Gary. <laughs> yeah, I should. I wish I had known. I would have set like a timer to see. I scrolled down to where there was the video that sort of was like the montage of a whole bunch of, of pictures. And then I was like, yeah, okay, I'm done. Like, I get it. <laughs> Is it, it, was, it, was a very, it was a very cute dog. Uh, I, I, I think that I'm a cat person still. That's fine. Yeah, it's all right. Self, of it, self-identified cat person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm self-identified cat lord. <laughs> Uh, which we have determined that is that is the uh, alternate uh, equivalent of cat lady. I'm not a cat. I'm not a cat lady. So I'm a cat lord. No, oh, because you have to bring it to that regal level. Yeah. Because otherwise, it's just lost. You're not a peasant. <laughs> Surely not. 
catch Can we talk about space for a minute? Since we uh, haven't? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about space. There was a a a, a, a ULA launch this morning. What was it? Was it a Delta Four? remember what it was. Uh, and we don't get a lot of ULA launches from Kennedy Space Center these days, or just in general. So I'm often seeing like Falcon 9s and I kind of know like the pace at which they move through the sky. So I know after launch, like how long I have to walk out to the driveway to look and see if I can see it. <laughs> you so for the you such a different reality. <laughs> <laughs> so I was watching the ULA launch and um, I'm like, well, I'll go out there a little bit early because I'm not sure how long. And that thing was hauling ass. Because by the time I got to the end of the driveway, like it was, I mean, it was a minute ahead of where I expect the Falcon 9 to be at that point. Now, granted, there might have been some like delay in it that I'm not aware of on the YouTube feed that doesn't exist on the SpaceX stuff. I don't know. I mean, there's probably a bunch of variables that I'm not accounting for, but it seemed to be moving a lot quicker than I expected. Well, and sometimes they, they don't call things off, but they do like an extra double check, like if something's malfunctioned or like vice versa, right? Like. I feel like they always have those announcements that are like, well, they don't name who's doing the check, but I was about to be like, Bob is double checking the something something engine. ULA has gotten really good. So ULA always has a built in hold as part of their launch process. So when they give you like a launch time of nine o'clock or whatever, like four minutes before launch, they put a hold in. And usually that hold is about like 10 minutes, 10 minutes or so. So, like, when you see the countdown, like knowing that there's going to be a 10 minute hold happens. And then more often than not, they just bump back a few minutes. So the night it was a 9:01 launch this morning, and and they ended up uh, during the hold extending it to 9:06, just because they didn't like some stuff they were seeing, but they wanted to get it. They figured it would take care of itself if they waited long enough. I, I mean, I don't know. That's probably like a really oversimplification, but a lot of it's like everything. I feel like everything that a, a back alley astronaut uh, could come up with in an explanation of of a rocket launch is probably a very poor explanation of what they were actually doing. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was the um the thing that you were describing the that was woven before? What is it called? Core rope memory. Yeah, that's a fun uh, hole to get into. There's several good articles about that. And it was kind of it kind of it was like in my conscience. Conscience? Consciousness. I guess it's in my conscience too. It yeah, a, yeah. It's affecting it just, your conscience as well. <laughs> it just gets to the level of like of like like touring machines and like like machines that like actually process ones and zeros to store information. And like, that's and like, like when they did, uh, when they stored information on like punch cards and stuff, and that's, that's a level of abstraction that my brain just can't, can't like, how do you act? Like, how does that translate into data? I don't understand. But it's not abstraction. Like in that case, like it's closer to the, yeah, I mean, that's true. Oh, yeah. So for your brain, it's an abstraction but for the computer. It's like less work. Yeah. No, my brain can't 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 be the language I understand or almost understand. Yeah, I just, I don't understand how that turns into a, like, anyway. Someone could put me in a room and try to explain it to me for an entire day, and I would just be like, what is, is what is. And I just, <laughs> 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 like, I kind of understand how you can, like, store information on a magnetic tape and then you run that tape through some sort of a reader and then yeah. the, the reader, like, processes the information, but, like, like that, that I can, I can get, or like you can, you can uh, store it on like a spinning disc, like that, that I understand. Um, but, but. Think of this then like an eight track. Yeah. You would, you would send in like voltage to change which track you're listening to. So different voltage input on different parts would change the output. Sure. <laughs> With lunch? <laughs> So like this punch card is track one and this punch card is track five and I, but there already has to be like the record player, <laughs> the, 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 uh, uh, oh, what's it called? Um, pre precursor to record player, uh, something or other phone. Uh, anyway, so you put, you put it in and then the, and then it says, oh, well, I should put in the needle and this groove right here. Um, when I was in college, I was really big on trying to understand how operating systems like bootstrap. So like how, when you start a computer, does the operating system know to like actually start doing things? Like before the operating system exists, like it has to, there has to be a way to start up the things that make the operating system start up. Like something has to happen. And I think I got really close to understanding at some point and now it just baffles me. Like now I think about it, I'm like, what the hell? How, I mean, 
But that's like because your brain needs to make room for knowledge that's like relevant to you on a day to day, right? I turn on a lot of computers. <laughs> I know, but you don't need to like consciously think about that each time. That's true. It would take a lot longer for it to boot if I had to do that, wouldn't it? I mean, I say this as someone who, like, my my brain is like twenty five percent Disney lyrics, so I maybe this is not the best argument. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like to think that our brains like kind of go through things and being like, this is relevant to my day to day. It needs to like be filed as such. I think Versus probably it has a lot to do with with how directly you're interacting with that. Like, I think that if you um, when we used Linux, when it was like earlier in the bootstrapper, like mattered, like the, you know, whatever, using your grub system or whatever you're trying to do that's, that's yeah. before the operating system loads, then, then that matters. I mean, then you care about it more because you're working with it more and then you remember or think about it more. So we're basically saying you don't care about it and that's why that's you don't know it anymore. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Which is like kind of sad. Do we have questions today? Uh, the only question that we have is from Allison, who asks, what has been the highlight of your week so far? That's a good question. In my defense, I asked this like two months ago, I think. Yeah. Oh, what was the highlight of my week two months ago? <laughs> no, but it can so be for this answer. week. Let's go for this week. I don't care about it, because I can't remember it, apparently. <laughs> um, this week... Hmm. I had a very nice deploy last night. Very smooth. That's kind of nice. Yeah, just like an hour and a half. Boom, done. Something's nondescript. You're like, it just went. Yeah, I didn't have to do a lot. I mean, I just hung out. We had a we had a meetup for the people who were involved in the uh, deploy, so we sort of chatted a bit. What was doing its thing? Kept an eye on it, and then went to bed. The highlight of my week this week has been uh, understanding time understanding time yeah well i'm in, in a in a programming sense although i'm looking oh. at i'm looking at oh you just think you do yeah no you're right i'm looking at <laughs> i'm looking at logs and i was supposed to, was supposed to send out an email today at at eight o'clock central and didn't so i'm obviously i did not understand time nearly as much as i thought i did but the major problems that i had with time have been solved i believe so at least that's something that's great that's good dealing yeah. with time is not fun but yeah, it didn't, it didn't do the thing that I wanted it to do. And, and back to the drawing board. Although it could just be like time zone thing. I don't know. Time is hard. Why, this is why we should only work in uh, Unix timestamps. It's true. Uh, yeah, I had a conversation about that yesterday. Uh, and that's, that's definitely one way of doing it. But then like you, as a human, don't grasp the, like what Unix timestamp like means because it's not relevant to you personally right this second in this minute lies <laughs> you're <laughs> you're an anomaly <laughs> that's probably also true <laughs> it's definitely i can 100 percent say it's true it's only been like 1.5 billion ish seconds since january 1st 1970 <laughs> utc billion ish well i don't i didn't want to yeah, one point five six five four eight five eight four nine. Eight, and five, the final minute five, of binary jazz five, is Gary <laughs> reciting the minute, the second since the epoch in Unix time. And then he starts to recite pi from memory. Yeah, right. <laughs> How far can you go in pi from memory? Uh, three point one four. <laughs> oh. So I think a three point one four one five nine two six eight, and then I lose it there. But we should check and see. But see, like, I could, I just have to agree with you because I, since I don't know, I'm like, yep, sounds fine. 3.1415926. I got it wrong. 3.1415926.5. <laughs> but I guess, like, there was something I read online that after, I don't know what the number was, after like four digits or five, like, it's, it's it completely immaterial in, like, on planet Earth. Like you would be, if you get to like five and you do the math on there and use that as like your like margin of error, like more than likely, like the tools that you use are going to be more inaccurate than your calculations. So like, it's kind of silly to calculate it. 
Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. Thank you.